Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you had a really great day trading today. And today was Monday, August 19th, and we just had our eighth straight green day in a row. And right before I hit record, I asked ChatGPT what the odds are in the S&P 500 to have nine green days in a row. And the answer I got was somewhere between 0.25% and 0.85%, so less than 1% of a chance that we have nine green days in a row. And considering the fact that futures right now are flat and the odds of having a green day tomorrow are about 54%. So there is a really high chance that we see a ninth green day. Even if we close one penny up tomorrow, we would be defying the odds. So. SPY, today we did open SPY with a little gap up and we did fill that gap right away. We opened right at a previous resistance and then we had another resistance above us. And we just opened and we squeezed up the entire day. We did get up to the top of the implied move, which was pretty small for today. It was 0.59%. And then we got past the next day's implied move at 559. And look at where we closed. We closed just underneath this resistance right here. It's that down gap and up gap. It's the island top just off of all-time highs. So right here, we made all-time highs at 565.16. This was back July 16th. And then when we gapped down, we closed today just underneath that gap. So if bears are hiding anywhere, it is gonna be in this gap. And taking it over to SPX, we did see the same thing over here. We opened slightly in the green, came back down and filled that gap and then we pushed straight above the next two resistance levels which were right here and right here and we did get to the top of the implied move and we even pushed past the top of the next day's implied move in that final candle and today i was looking at this setup and when the implied move is so much smaller than the 30-day average volatility, it almost makes me want to find the midpoint between the two and add one extra level. That just feels like a practical thing for me, especially selling spreads. These numbers have just been too close lately. So if you've been selling spreads at the top of the implied move, while that might work in a healthy market, these positions have been blowing up during this squeeze. And so if you've ever wondered what happens when we see VIX at 65, and then at the end of that week on Friday, we had VIX come down to 21, and then from the beginning of the week this week from 21, to 14 and this is actually unprecedented because the only other two times i'm going to take it to the vix chart and if we look at vix this is all time vix right here and vix was started back in 1993 along with spy and the only two times that vix has hit 65 was right here this is in march of 2020 and then the other time was in October, November of 2008. So in 2008, it took us from when we hit 65 to get back down to 14. So right here, that took 881 days approximately in 2008 for VIX to go from 65 down to 14. And then in 2008, no, this is 2020, we just did 2008. So in 2020, where when we hit 65, that was right here. And then it took us, this is 15 still. So that's pretty close enough. I'm gonna say 15 is fine. 15 and a half fix right here. Took 546 days. So we did that. We went from 65 back down to 14 in just 10 trading sessions. So honestly, we are witnessing historic moves in the S&P 500. And let's go back to SPX. 
and let me see if I missed anything. So we are just a little bit short of this island top gap off of all time highs and then the up gap that came just one day before it. And right here, if bears are hiding anywhere, it's gonna be in this gap. So keep an eye out on that. You could see at this point, we're quite overextended. And the question is, how many shorts are left to cover from this move down here? So SPY did close up 0.96%. SPX closed up 0.97%. VIX came down another 1% today. We are in the mid 14s and we did not close within the implied move here today. And then switching over to QQQ, we did see the same thing over here. We did start with a neutral open here today and we pushed up and we filled the rest of this island top gap. That was QQQ's big mission today and that was a gap that we gapped under a previous support level. So if I take this to the one hour time frame, you could see right here that green line was support here, support here, then we gapped underneath that support and then we swung back up, that was resistance. Today, we did see that level as support again and we bounced right there at open and we closed this gap right here. So we possibly just reclaimed 473 let's call that 474 as a support level right here and we did close out this next island gap right here qqq did close up 1.31 percent today vxn pretty flat down 0.05 percent and out here we also did close outside of the implied move and it was that last candle i believe let's go back to the 30 minute yep up until the last 30 minute candle here we actually were within the implied move and then we pushed up had that last 30 minute effort to close out this gap and we got even above the next day's implied move just by a little bit though 481 27 is where we closed 481 was the top of the implied move for tuesday's contract and then taking it over to IWM, we did open IWM with a little gap up and you could see a little bit of that is still open. We did not come back down to fill it. We did get above the one hour 200 moving average, which was resistance right here last week. So we got above it and we did come into this next gap. And let me take it back just a little bit to show that gap. So when we gapped above that long standing resistance right here, Actually, let me take it out a little further. So right here, 211 was a big resistance for a few years now. So when we gapped over that during that big rally, we saw an up gap, another up gap. So two days in a row of up gaps, which definitely helped propel us forward. But then we also had a down gap here on the way down. So this is the gap we were in today. We did close this out on Friday after the consumer spending report. So that bull gap got closed out. And then we did see on Friday this second bull gap as resistance, but today we pushed up into it and we did still leave a little bit of the bear gap open. And it's pretty funny because IWM likes to play a little bit more by the options rules. SPY and SPX and QQQ, they come outside of their implied moves pretty often, but IWM has been staying pretty close. And the top of the implied move for today was 215. We closed just a little bit above that, 215.20. And IWM did close up 1.22%. The Russell Volatility Index did close green today, up 0.23%, and we did close just outside of the implied move here today. But if you did sell 215, 216 spreads here today, they would have been green. It wouldn't have been 100%, but maybe you would have taken 40 or 50% on those spreads right there. And then DIA. DIA looks a little bit different because we do have only weekly contracts here. And so the weekly implied move based on where we closed last Friday is between 400 and 413. And today the 30 day average volatility was actually exactly the same as the entire implied move for the week. So you could tell just how big 
the past 30 days. Moves have been compared to what the implied move is for the entire week. So 400 to 413 was the implied move on the day. Sorry, 30 day average volatility. And we did open with a little gap up and then we pushed up just a little bit today and then we traded sideways for most of the day. And honestly, if DIA had daily contracts, I feel like we would have closed right at the top of the implied move. I don't know why it just looks like it, but it doesn't, so we can't know that. But stupid Willy here, definitely overbought. And we're actually on the wrong time frame. This is the one hour. Let's do, go down to the 30 minute. And 30 minute stupid Willy actually showing signs of weakness here. You could see that it was red for most of the day, and that could account for some of that sideways action there. DIA closed up 0.59%, and we did stay within the 30-day average volatility here. And we also closed within my imaginary implied move today. I just want to give one of these indices a thumbs up, and I think DIA deserves it. So there you have it, guys, a recap of today. I'm going to go fix up my charts for tomorrow, and then let's go check out tomorrow's levels. All right, guys, so before we head into tomorrow's trading ranges, if you find these videos useful, if they help you to choose better strikes and take better trades, and you love that I break it down every night, then please make sure to give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you are notified whenever I post a video. Leave me a comment if you have any questions at all. Sometimes I move quickly. This is complicated stuff. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, leave me a comment. I'll try and put it in another way that might resonate better. And if you took an awesome trade based on something I said or you learned something new, feel free to use that thank you button underneath the video and buy me a coffee. It's a really easy way to show appreciation for all the work I put into it and it ensures that the content keeps flowing and today it makes up for my red day. All right, so starting with SPY, tomorrow's implied move is between 556 and 563 and that is from options the 30-day average volatility is still much wider 549 to 570 and then on wednesday's contract the implied move is between 555 and 564 so for tomorrow's contract the implied move is 0.52 percent and the 30-day average volatility 1.76 I did say that personally for me, I might be looking at the midpoint between 563 and 570. So that would probably be about 566 and then maybe 552 to the downside. And to the upside, the first level to look for is going to be the island top. This is off of all time highs. So let me zoom out and recenter here. So all time highs we made back here in July. So July 16th, and then we had the day before we gapped up and then pushed to make those all time highs. The next day we gapped down. So we have this up gap and this down gap, and that is just above where we closed today. So bottom of that gap, 560. Bottom of the bull gap, 561 and a half to 562. So the bull gap is small, but a lot of times that top of the gap will be resistance within the gap. Then the top of the implied move is at 563. On Wednesday's contract, it's 564. My imaginary midway strike between the implied move and the top of the trading range is 566. And that is just above these previous all time highs, which is 565.16. And then to the downside, we have the 35 EMA is underneath the implied move in a big way. It's actually almost twice outside of the implied move or twice the width. So that is troubling. And let me extend that out. And I am absolutely willing to bet that we have a red day tomorrow. And not just because 
there is a 0.85% chance that we have nine green days in a row. But because this 35 EMA is so far outside of the implied move, and then the bottom of the implied move for tomorrow's contract is 556, and on Wednesday's contract, 555. And that's really it to the downside. We do have underneath all of that, we do have this up gap from consumer credit, and then the 50 day moving average, and the one hour. I think that's the one hour, it could be the four hour. Yeah, the one hour 200 moving average, which strangely enough, the momentum there is still facing down. And between these two levels right here, we might have a little bit of flat momentum if we enter this gap here. And then SPX, the implied move over here, is between 55.80 and 56.35. That is from options. The 30-day average volatility, much wider, 55.10 to 57.10. And on Wednesday's contract, 55.70 to 5650 and honestly guys i really like the idea of when there's such a disconnect between implied move and 30-day average volatility it does happen not always to this extent but finding a strike that is in the midpoint between the top of the implied move to the top of the 30-day average volatility might not be a bad idea and just visually looking at it right here 56.80 might not be a bad one. That is, if you're a spread trader and you wanna get maybe above where we'll see resistance, all time highs are at 56.69. So 56.80 is probably where I'm gonna be looking. If we do get up that high, of course we are extremely overbought, but we are also in the middle of a extremely unprecedented VIX crush and we definitely could squeeze higher still. So just be aware of that. Technicals are getting pushed to their limit, but again, let's see what happens. So to the upside, the first levels to look for right here are that same up gap and down gap. So off of previous all time highs, 56.69.67. We did make that on July 16th and then we gapped down. The day before we gapped up and pushed up to make those highs and both of those gaps are right here. And the bottom of that bull gap lines up with the top of the implied move, 56.35. And just outside of the implied move for the next two days, we do have all time highs. To the downside, we do have the bottom of the implied move at 55.80. The 35 EMA is quite far outside of the implied move here. That again, definitely a troubling signal. And then the bottom of the implied move on Wednesday's contract, 55.70. And these two levels right here, I just wanna collapse that down because this, all right, so that, is not really a resistance level. And this one right here, we got above today. So those are not relevant. So let's get that out of there. So then bottom of the implied move for tomorrow, 55.80, 55.70 for Wednesday. And then underneath all of that, we do have this up gap. This is again from consumer spending. And we do have that 50 day moving average, that one hour 200 moving average, which is still pointing down, super weird. In most cases, that downward momentum would have pulled us back down, but we are still clearly squeezing. So that is SPX and honestly, not too difficult of a trading range. We don't have too much to look for. The 35 EMA, always a super important level. And then this island top right here. And then QQQ, the implied move over here is between 477 and 485. That looks like such a teeny tiny implied move. Let's see what that measures out to. So 0.78%, it's really not that small. It's just really deceptive because of the size of the moves we've been having and that 30 day average volatility, which is 469 to 494. And that is so wide, so 2.53%. So that two is coming down. It was close to three yesterday. And then the implied move on Wednesday's contract, 475 
to 487. And let me get zoomed in here to the upside. We do have this dashed line. I don't know what that is. Let's go back. Okay, so that is previous resistance. And that goes back to off of all time highs when we did start dropping and we did make a bunch of lower highs and that was the second lower high before we gapped down underneath that support which we did actually just get back above today so that is at 484 and that is our first level to look for and then 485 is the top of the implied move 487 is the top of the implied move on Wednesday's contract and then where would the midpoint between 485 and 494 right about where this gap is right here the bottom of this gap so 489 in my opinion that would be a comfortable place to be far enough away to sell spreads and so 489 is also the bottom of this down gap right here and then we have the top of that gap at 496 so could be some bears hanging out right here and then to the downside 35 EMA and that is also pretty far outside of the implied move that 35 EMA is right there with that 50 day moving average and right where we did see support today and again in most cases when the 35 EMA is that far underneath the implied move we do tend to see a down day again we are in the middle of a unprecedented squeeze and that may not be the case but most cases that does work out to be true and it might be true tomorrow we'll see so underneath that we do have the one hour 200 moving average and again that momentum is facing down and in most cases that would have pulled us back by now and IWM the implied move over here is between 213 and 218 and that is from options and just remember IWM has been sticking much closer to the implied move than the other three that we just went over and then the implied move on Wednesday's contract 212 to 219 and the 30-day average volatility is between 208 and 222 so much wider that's almost three percent there remember IWM has been having some of the biggest moves so 3% in the last 30 days average, and then 1% is what is implied with options. To the upside, the first level to look for is going to be the rest of this down gap from two Mondays ago. Nope, I'm sorry, that was from the week before that big drop. So this was from where we broke out above. We had the two up gaps and then this down gap where we gapped completely underneath these two gaps we did fill these two bull gaps here and we filled the second one today but we do have the rest of this bear gap and the tops of gaps the tops of bear gaps specifically can be resistance levels so 216 and a quarter is that first level of resistance and then 218 is the top of the implied move 219 on Wednesday's contract and so where would the midpoint be here? That would be about 220, right? Between 218 and 222, yeah. So about 220 would be that midpoint. But again, IWM has been sticking a lot closer to the actual true top of the implied move. And just so you guys know, I'm only gonna be giving that midpoint so long as the implied move and the 30-day average, there's a big disconnect oh, most of the time. The rest of the year, we've been really close. These two levels have been in much more agreement. And then to the downside, we do have the one hour 200 moving average. That was resistance for us last week on Thursday and Friday. Today, we did get above that level. And then the bottom of the implied move is at 213. And I'm seeing a level that I missed. We did not close out this morning gap today. So right here, to right here we actually have a bull gap so look to that as a possible place for support and let's lock that in place and then the bottom of that gap is at 212 a little bit above that 212 36 
So that lines up a little bit above t uh, Wednesday's implied move bottom there. And then we have 211. 211 was a really long support and resistance level. Let's just go back to the five year chart here. So after the COVID era, after that initial monster rally here, we found support at 211. You can see we bounced at that level often. And then once we broke down underneath that in 2022, we swung back up, that was resistance. And then for two years, that was our resistance. So right here, resistance, and then we did come back above that level, and then we dropped underneath it, and now we're back above it. So we're chopping around 211. And uh, let's go back to that five year again. So here, we stayed around that 211 level for a really long time. We got above it, but we always came back to, down to it. So what's to say we don't see that level often? It could be a new level that we stick around for a while. So 211 is this dashed line right here. That is just outside of the implied moves for the next two days. 30 minute 200 moving average. That momentum is still down. High probability that that pulls us down. And then the 50 day moving average is just underneath it. And that momentum is slightly up. And then this up gap right here, that was from last Wednesday going into Thursday. So that was when we had consumer credit. You could also see this little bit of that down gap from that big drop day. We did leave a little bit of that open and we gapped over it. So that again is something that could, could pull our price down to that 208 level and then underneath all of that four hour 200 moving average so the one week 35 ema the four hour 200 moving average and the 50 day moving average those are the biggest moving averages in our in our time frame here or in our trading range and just know that the momentum here is flat so just know it's very possible in iwm that we do trade sideways for a little bit here. Small caps need to regain their footing before attempting another rally like this. So that was IWM and DIA. So this one again looks a little bit different because we only have weekly options. And the implied move on the week was between 400 and 413. And then the 30 day average volatility is what which is what we're using for our daily trading range, is between 403 and 415. And you could see that we got above most of our resistance levels here. Uh, this dashed line right here, that is our next level to look for. It is at 411. And I believe this is all time highs. I'm not sure. Let me zoom out as far as I can. Yeah, so 413 is all-time highs in DIA, and that does actually fall within our trading range for tomorrow. So all-time highs are not out of reach, and we did cut through all of this resistance. So really, the only two levels that are in the upside is 411, and then we're going to use the top of the implied move on the week, which is 413. And then underneath us, we have the 35 EMA. That is not underneath the implied move. Of course, we don't have an implied move here, so it very well could be. But 35 EMA has been a constant support ever since we got above the four hour 200 moving average. And this entire rally, 35 EMA on the 30 minute time frame, we've been above. So if we do come down to the 35 EMA, treat it as a possible level of support. And only if we break it, look to 403, that is the bottom of the trading range for tomorrow. Underneath that, we have this down gap right here with this up gap right here. Island bottom with a few levels of support, the one hour 200 moving average, the 30 minute 200 moving average, and actually because the 30 minute is underneath the one hour, that is still bearish from a technical standpoint and the 50 day moving average is underneath us too and we also have this little bit of up gap from that big drop we did not fill it just kidding 
forget the last thing I said. I just didn't close it out right. So this I will fix, but that is not in the trading range at all. So that is DIA. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything and what your thoughts are and have fun tomorrow. Trade safe. Make sure you take profits when you're out and I'll see you guys tomorrow.